Here's a simple inductor circuit. I'm going to have a power supply. I'll just run a DC. Positive, negative. Battery. And here's an inductor. And it looks like a coil of wire. The reason is that it's, um, it's a coil of wire. I'll put a resistor in here. And I'll call this L for inductor. I'll say inductance. Inductance. And that's given by L. Here's my resistor. R. Here's my voltage. This is an inductor. As a matter of fact, and it's just a it's a spool with the wire coiled around it. And we've talked about what happens if you run a, a current through a coil of wire. It creates a magnetic field. Now, when I do that, just imagine, I close this switch. Now all these electrons, they can feel that positive charge over there. And they run through there, they get slowed down a little bit by the resistor. And while they're moving through the inductor, they're creating a magnetic field. And the stronger the current, the stronger the magnetic field. What happens is that creation of current, that change in current, produces a back voltage that fights the change in current. So as I try to increase the current, I'm increasing the magnetic field, which changes, which fights that change in current. It's sluggish. It pushes back. It's like, um, it's like a tire pump. You know how a tire pump works? It's hydraulic, or pneumatic, excuse me. If I just push just slowly, it goes so easily. But if I push really hard, it fights back. It gives me more resistance the harder I push. This does the same thing. This is the fluid equivalent. This is the, uh, this is the electronic analog. Let's see. We talked about, um, um, let's see. We talked about a fluid storage device already. That was the, let me talk about what was that called? I lost the word. A fluid accumulator. So a fluid accumulator, what it does is it takes energy in one form and stores it in another. Well, we talked about capacitors. They take energy and they store it as electrical. Well, the inductor takes energy and stores it as magnetic field energy. So it pumps up the magnetic field. And what that does is it keeps you from, it keeps the current from rising too fast. Whereas normally, the current without this inductor, it would be on. Now, when I start it up, the changing current, as it tries to increase, the magnetic field fights it. And so instead of going straight up, the current's going to rise slowly and peak out as an exponential. And so as it comes up here, uh, then it's slowly going to get to normal, be like, like this. Here's, uh, here's my current. Here's over time. Instead of just rising straight up, it's going to go like this. And when it drops, it's not going to drop fast, it's going to drop like that. Well, this is great. What if you got an inductor in a power strip and uh, your house gets hit with lightning and uh, it's going to take out your computer except that big, that big electrical surge that comes through, it goes through the inductor. The inductor stores it up in magnetic field and slowly releases it, just like the fluid accumulator stores water or kinetic energy of water and then slowly releases it. That's what the inductor's for. Now, The inductor's units, the unit of the inductor is the Henry, named after Joseph Henry, Joseph Henry, who was an American scientist in the 19th century. So that's 1H. And the potential energy stored in an inductor is 1 half the inductance times the current squared. You notice this. Um, one half inductance times current squared, uh, one half capacitance times voltage squared, same kind of formula. One half mass times velocity squared for kinetic energy, one half spring constant times displacement squared for uh, spring energy. It's always uh, something that fights the motion times some rate squared. I can actually write, forget you ever heard it from me, but I can also write the uh, energy stored in a capacitor as one half, one over C, which is more of a resistance term, times the charge squared. 
I won't test you on that. Also, keep in mind, if I double the current, it's squared, so I'll get four times the energy. If I cut the, uh, if I cut the air engine, if I cut the current by a third, that'd be one ninth of the potential energy because it's squared. So let's do an example. Uh, let's say I've got an inductance of uh, 30 millihenries. And I've got a, f a current of 4 amps. And I want to know what's the potential energy stored once it gets all up and running. So the potential energy stored is 1 half the inductance times the current squared. There's my working equation, which is 1 half, 30, and again, I got milli. That means times 10 to the minus 3, so I'm going to say times 10 to the minus 3. Times 4 amps, and don't forget that's 4 amps squared. So that's going to be That's going to be equal to 0 0.240 henrys times amps squared gives you joules. So 0 0.240 joules, about a quarter of a joule. So that's inductance. We've talked about capacitance. Now we need to go back and talk about electrical energy. We've talked about it before. We talked about uh, electrical work in the first quarter. So let's go through it again. last two we've already discussed, and then there's thermal energy. So let me just give you a little review here, and we'll, and we'll put them both in a problem.